I mean, <laughs> just like flap your arms or something. Yell at them. <laughs> okay. Welcome to 6th Gen Farmer. Now, for those of you guys who follow the channel, you probably know it. We just got back from a snowmobile trip. I went out with my buddy. Well, we got back last night, and uh, I decided to spend a day at my buddy's house because he does something a little different than I do. So, as you guys know, I'm just a grain farmer. We just do corn, soybeans, some organic corn, and some cover crops here and there. I guess we do have some pigs, but I don't really do anything with those. But uh, Andrew here, they have a feedlot. Where how many cows do you even have? I don't even know. Uh, there's 2,800 head in the feedlot. We have like 600 to 650 cows. So I'm learning something new today because I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> so I decided to bring you guys along with. So I met Andrew here at college. We both go to SDSU. And actually we're both in agricultural systems technology. And that's one of the many things I like about SDSU and our major is the fact that we can both be in completely different areas of agriculture and we can customize our major the way we want it. Are those horses? What? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> I'm gonna kick you out. So this is a feeding operation, huh? Yep. So we got the ground straw pile, ground hay pile, distillers, earlage pile, silage pile. Then inside the shed we have the uh, cracked corn. Okay. Cool, don't know what any of that is. <laughs> it takes three people to feed in the morning, but there's three people here, so I'm off the hook. Okay, so when you feed, when you feed the cows, out of all those piles, you do like a certain percentage of each pile, or how does that? Yeah, uh, so the cattle are on different levels of uh, rations, depending on the calories in them. So the fatter the cattle get, the more uh, higher, it's called mega calorie rations are on. So okay. yeah, as the cattle get fatter, we increase the rations. Interesting. And I, I can actually show you the program we use once you get done on the iPad. Huh. So then we have all different types of hay bales to grind up into it. Those alfalfa, millet, straw bales, oats bales, uh, straight hay bales in between. <laughs> this is pretty impressive here, guy. Yeah, it takes a lot. Okay, it looks like it takes a lot. <laughs> I see a lot of time put in here. Yeah. Then we actually we pay somebody to come out with a big uh, hay grinder to grind. I don't know, probably oh, once every two weeks. And the piles don't last that long. Is that one? Is that one that's like connected to a semi? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I've seen one. There's and one of our grain elevators, like the city owns a lot right next to it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the our local grinder will park his truck on the city lot. Yeah. They so I've seen them, but I've never seen them in action. Oh, they're pretty sweet. So this is how we do all the feeding. So we'll have all your loads. So we feed nine loads a day with uh, these two feed trucks. And then you'll have drop one, which you do in the morning. And of course you'd have your drop twos. But when you select these, you can go to load, and then you would load each of your ingredients in. And it's Bluetooth to the uh, scale on the trucks, so it counts down the load uh, weight. So once you get all your ingredients in, You'd go to delivery and it does the same thing. You'd pick the pin, you drop it off for each pin and it counts down the weight. And then all of this is tracked. If it loads. There we go, so it, this has each one of the pins in it with how much they're getting fed. And so how much it is per day of each one, how much you feed them total a day, what they're eating. And in this, you can change the, uh, the ration. So this would be a 62, which would be a pretty high one. And we start them out at like 48s and 52s and we move them up slowly. And then we can make each of the rations. <laughs> oh, we might have to step outside to look at that. Uh, you get the point. Yeah. No, we it's... can enter in the new rations. Then you have, you put on when you sell them. Then it gives you, you can print out a whole spreadsheet. Uh, this would be the rations. So we can change them. And this is how if like people... We, we do some custom feeding, so people will buy the cattle and they pay us to feed them. And so this is how we charge them for feed. Okay. Because we know exactly how much we fed them and what each, you know, ingredient is, what the cost of it is. So when we sell a group of cattle, we can print out the sheet and it tells us exactly how much we spend on food, how much they're eating each day, and basically if we're making money. 
Because you put the input in when you buy them and they show up. Yep. Yep. That's pretty cool. It makes it a lot easier to keep track of. Yeah. Look at them, they're all lined up waiting for their breakfast. Oh, yeah. You just leave the gate open? No. Oh, I'm about to say. <laughs> I don't want to walk to the bottom. Oh, so you open it like 12 foot. I'm like, I'm not that big. Well, I was a spit. I wasn't a stand at the spit, you know. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> I, was, I was going through the mud. You know, I would just like to point out, you know, while we're in the pen, statistically, you're more likely to be killed by a cow than a shark. Yeah, I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're nah. for you, bud. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, they're all... Pretty vicious animals. Yeah, I see that. They're all, uh, they're all coming at me here. Yeah, it's set up that they come off the play mound and right onto the swim pad and onto the pad to eat. They try to stay out of the mud as much as possible. I see that. But because, because yeah, because one was kind of walking around here, I could tell he was not liking the mud. No, very much. the wet mud's hard on their feet. Rot, so. But it's kind of tough when stalks the. But kind of nice out to the top of the ground. So yeah, I'm not gonna imagine. You know, yeah, because it it froze here for a bit and snowed and then it thawed out and all the snow melted. Now, now it's like this. And I'm on top of cement right now. Yeah. Interesting. Look at all the babies. Cute little guys. Oh, you back it up. <laughs> you don't want to play chicken with a feed truck? No, I'd, I'd lose that. So every single cow that comes into place, we get run through the chute, and we either implant it, or you pour them, or uh, tag them. Stuff like that. Just so you know, see, you don't name each individual cow. Well, you can so stick you, a name a, in front of there's it. There's not like, Jesse and Bob. You don't know. No, you, don't, you don't go out in the pens and know exactly which one is which. Well, I mean, we have Bessie, but it's just like Bessie 100 through like <laughs> 5,000. I don't know. No, I've not been to SDSU beef facility. So we built this, and then I went to the SDSU like beef facility. I'm like, huh, that looks familiar, because we have the same setup. Huh. Which I thought was kind of neat. That is pretty neat. Because we have the same Daniels alleyway and silence of shoot and it's a bud box setup. Which we don't know what a bud box is. So the idea is you have your cattle waiting down here. You run your cattle into the bud box, you close the gate. And your cattle go like where am I supposed to go? And so they come around, and they try to get back out, and it funnels them right into the alleyway. <laughs> it's supposed to be a stress-free operation, so there's no tub, no crowding them. It's supposed to be nice and flow easy. Does it work pretty good? Yeah, usually for the most part. I'm sure you have your suburban cow every once in a now. Well, that's why while, but... we have the good old secondary gate. So if you get a stubborn one, then you would close this gate. Okay. And then they don't have a choice. Makes sense. So we're moving cattle. Basically, you have to just stand like in this one spot and make sure they go in the gate. Okay. And if they get past me, we're in trouble. Okay. Because you here's the, cause here's the thing, Andrew. Here, here's how I see it. But I'm about, you know, a foot wide and 150 pounds. And I mean, <laughs> just like flap your arms or something. Yell at them. Okay. <laughs> Wait, wait, what's this? Oh, that's the uh, pickup pen. Okay. 
but I'll drop one. Pick up head. I've seen him work on YouTube. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Salad chopper. I've never seen a salad chopper work. Interesting. So, when we do oats and rye or like haylage, then we use the pickup head. Okay. And corn. Obviously corn. We use the yeah. Corn head. Now, now, what is this? That's a combine. It's red, dude. It's a good combine. <laughs> See this quality. See this custom toolbox. Quality. <laughs> Buddy, I think you need to go back to school and learn how to read. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I like it. So you got the 8400. You want to buy it? 80, 80, the 8650? Yeah, it's for sale. Oof, I don't know, bud. Come on. It has wheels. Oh, gee, I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you had an 8650 track, which, you know, they never made, which would be pretty cool, I may be interested. You could put tracks on it. Now, if you see this, ah. Not quality. <laughs> There's a big distinction. You're not, you're not a big Magnum fan? No, not at all. Interesting. Case makes a good combine, that's about it in my opinion. Oh, an air seeder. Oh yeah. No, my uncle runs this. We plant all of our beans, so my uncle does his with this. Okay. Yep, we've got silage trucks, uh, heads for the uh, swap up. Now this, this is actually a fun machine. She stopped pretty fast when you hit a line, so that's... <laughs> well, if you wouldn't fall asleep when you're, uh... Hey, auto steer comes in pretty handy. <laughs> yeah, to, be, get a little beep at the end, wake you up, turn around, and <laughs> get a, go, goes back off. Yeah, except for there's an obstacle between you and the end. <laughs> yeah, I can see how that could be a problem. Yeah. So you, so you feed some out of the, the bunks or whatever. Mm -hmm. So why do you have feed some through bunks and some out in the field like that? So these are all of our, uh, our cows that are pregnant and we're gonna calve these out. Okay. And it's we don't like having them in pens since it's not as easy on them. They can just walk around out in the fields. And sometimes we do pull bunks out here and we do feed them in bunks, but it all depends. Okay. They're actually sorting cattle. Um, he kind of tried to explain to me what they were doing. I didn't really quite follow, but my job is to stand here and fly my arms to make sure no cows escape through this gate. I think I can handle that. Hey, bud, what are you doing? There you go. How you doing? Oh, no. Nope. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's kind of crappy out today, you know what? No, man, it ain't bad. It's cold and it's humid, so it's really cold. It's kind of, kind of raining a little bit. just take the cattle out and you just push them through the center. Yeah. So where, where, where are you taking these ones? To that the sorting alleyway. Pull off the bat one. Bring the rest back up and throw them in. Okay. Interesting. Yep. No, we usually do this like twice a week. Twice a week? Yep. Maybe, maybe three times all of them. Okay. Well, I got a long drive ahead of me. The weather's not looking too great. So I'm gonna head out early. So we're gonna load my snowmobile back on my trailer, head out. Thank you, Andrew, for bringing me a snowmobile trip. And thank you for letting me tag along your farm for a couple days here, or for not a couple days, for I guess like half a day, but oh, yeah. no, appreciate it. And great time having you. Yeah. See you guys next one. <laughs>